Meanwhile, folks, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer announcing today that the House will deliver the impeachment article against former President Trump on Monday. This comes as Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, uh, I should say Minority Leader now, Mitch McConnell, uh, is proposing to Schumer that they delay the impeachment trial for Trump until February. Many Senate Republicans and Democrats are also questioning the constitutionality of holding an impeachment trial against what essentially is a private citizen that happens to be the former president. Joining us now, Professor Emeritus at Harvard Law and author of the book, Guilt by Accusation, Alan Dershowitz. Alan, it looks like they're moving forward with this in one shape or another, the timing we can discuss. You have said that you feel like this is unconstitutional. So who rules on that? I mean, this is a political endeavor by the legislative branch is there any oversight at all, or does it just come down to your opinion might be that it's unconstitutional, but if enough of them vote, then they say it is? Well, that's a hard question. Now, we hear often the president isn't about the law, but Congress isn't about the law. They can't impeach when it's in violation of the Constitution. Normally, the issue would be initially up to the chief justice, because the Constitution says that if a president is tried, the chief justice must preside. But there's only one president. His name is Biden, not Trump. And so I don't think that um, Chief Justice Roberts will agree to preside over the trial of an ex-president, in which case the presiding official is the vice president of the United States, who is the president of the Senate, who may be running for president in 2024 against Donald Trump. And so the idea that she would be making rulings against her potential uh, campaign adversary for president seems to be inconsistent with conflict of interest rules. So it's a mess. Uh, the framers did not intend this. The framers did not intend former presidents to be put on trial. That's why they made no provision for who the presiding official is. So if Speaker Pelosi does, in fact, deliver the articles of impeachment no. on Monday, as she has said that she now will do, does that mean uh, constitutionally that an impeachment trial would have to begin on Tuesday? No. Constitution says nothing to say, has nothing to say about timing. It's only Senate rules and House rules, which can be uh, changed. Um, and, of course, we now have a 50-50 split in the Senate, tied to be broken by the vice president. So this is going to be a real mess. The first question is going to be who presides. And the second question will be, can you have a trial, a real trial, just days after uh, the um, articles have been delivered? As far as I know, the president doesn't have his legal team completely set. Uh, will witnesses be called? Uh, will experts be called? Will there be opportunity first to vote on whether or not the Senate has a jurisdiction? Does that require a 50-50 vote? Does it require a two-thirds vote like the rest? These are all questions that have to be answered. In the end, uh, this is not supposed to be just a political decision, as Hamilton said in Federalist 65. It should be governed by the rule of law and the rule of the Constitution. The Constitution simply doesn't provide for the trial of a former president. We know that from the Nixon case. Nixon wasn't put on trial after he resigned under pressure. He could have been impeached. He could have been tried. But it never occurred to anybody to do that, because that's not what the framers of the Constitution had in mind. Uh, Professor, can further information be added to the articles, or can you only try the president, uh, former president in this case, for what's already in the article of impeachment? Can, can anything be added to, to embellish it, or could they add another article? How would that work? No, you can't. Um, the Constitution requires that a president be impeached by the House and then put on trial for the impeachment. So the House has to vote on anything before the president can be put on trial on that. So they can't just amend the articles and add another article. Whether they can add evidence is a different question. It would, you know, the rules generally in criminal cases are when somebody is indicted, you can't add elements to the indictment at trial. You have to go back to the grand jury. But, of course, you can add evidence. So it's complicated, and it's technical, and um, you need a ruling. And the ruling should come from the presiding official. And the first question is, who is going to preside? I don't think it's going to be Chief Justice Roberts. I don't think he will agree to preside over a trial of a former president. There is only one president. 
and his name is not Trump. I think that he did uh, come out and say that he does not want to do this, uh, does not want to preside over it. Uh, in reference to President Trump's legal team, I do believe uh, there had been discussion that you would be a part of it, and we asked you uh, the last time we spoke, and you said that you would not uh, be doing that. Has that changed? And also, do you know who will be a part of his legal team at this point? Well, I regard this whole thing as political theater, and I'm neither a politician nor an actor, so I don't see any role for myself in political theater. The last case was very different. It was a real trial, and I played a role in that. Uh, I'm told that he is considering a, a very able lawyer from uh, South Carolina who is well known to the senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, and um, I, but that's all I've heard. Um, I, I don't think um, Rudy Giuliani will be part of it because he may be a witness. And I will continue to oppose impeachment in the court of public opinion, but uh, not on the, the Senate floor. I've done that once, and uh, I think that's enough. Uh, as I said, I also think there's really a role for a lawyer here because the trial should not go forward. It's unconstitutional. If I were to be the lawyer, I would simply challenge the jurisdiction and, and not put it on a defense because I think any, any verdict by the Senate will be null and void. Now, let's assume, hypothetically, the Senate votes to remove him. He can't be removed. He's already out of office. And to disqualify him. If I were he, I would ignore the disqualification. And if he wants to run for office, run again. Mm -hmm. Let them then challenge it in court. And then the court would have to decide whether the Senate acted properly. And I'm confident the Senate did not act properly, would not have acted properly if they disqualify him. We'll see what happens on Monday. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Right. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them. Tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.